Hello, I have here the big 2021 LEGO Lunar New Year set. It's the Spring Lantern Festival. Now, I personally am not learned in the Chinese Lunar New Year traditions, so I'm just going to be going through this as a LEGO fan. I think the best first thing to do here is just survey the entire set from on high like this, so you get a good idea of its overall layout, its overall form factor. This is built on two base plates, so one full-sized 32 by 32 and one half-sized 16 by 32 and those two sections are not permanently connected. You can see some Technic pinholes on here. You'll see some Technic pins sticking out the other side. There are two main arrangements of how you can put this together and it is designed to fit into an existing Lego city. This will work in conjunction with, for example, uh, just modular buildings without any modification. I believe it'll also uh, work with the Ninjago City sets, the way that it's designed. And I'll show you how you can reconfigure this a little bit. One of the nicest things about this, in my opinion, uh, just overall, just taking all the steps back at the highest possible level, is that nothing is truly hidden here. You don't need to take anything apart. You don't need to use a, a probing camera. You don't need to use any tricks. You don't need to use a flashlight. Everything that is here, you can appreciate as just a regular person just looking at it from normal angles. We will, of course, as always, look at the minifigures up close by themselves, but I wanted to leave them in this shot, at least to start with, to establish scale and to show you just how the entire thing is designed to be interacted with uh, by minifigures and, you know, to have them posed all around. It is scaled appropriately to them. This feature over here is called a moon gate for folks who aren't familiar with it. It's just, it's round. It's completely round. And I think it's done pretty nicely. Good detailing for the small little bit of roof there. Extends off to the side as well. There are a lot of lanterns in this set because it's a spring lantern festival. So this is a regular street light. And then they hung a couple of extra lanterns there as well. These fence elements along the side are custom built up. So you can see they're using the small one by one modified brick pieces with the little scroll like element coming off the side. Up here, you know, we've gotten these in red before. It's like a pumpkin piece, but in red, these are all vinyl pieces. And each of these has actually two of these banners, one long, one short. You can find uh, translations for each of these online very easily. A lot of people have translated them. I personally don't read the language, but like I said, there's plenty of information out there available if that's what you're interested in, or if you'd like, feel free to Share it down in the comments if you are able to read this. That would be appreciated. I'm sure plenty of other people would like to see that. And it, we will be looking at the minifigure accessories as well. The amount of foliage is a little bit limited here. You can see just a small tree off the edge here. Coming around this corner, I believe this fence piece that was first introduced with the Ninjago City stuff, uh, I, I believe that's when it was first introduced, has been recolored here into gray. I don't think we got that in gray before. These lantern pieces that are made with minifig heads in trans red are printed and they're printed on two sides. I'll, I'll show you one of those up closer as well. Here's the other moon gate. Again, perfectly round. They even have a little, little jumper right there so you can pose a figure walking through it. We've got the black colored uh, uh, sword hilts there used for a nice little bit of extra detail. And then, yeah, it pretty much just continues on. Sorry about the one little piece of, of dust or hair there, but this just basically continues with the existing patterns. When you enter the space through either main entrance, you get to a partially worn down old pathway, old stone pathway that uses a combination of just open studs, which are formed with plates on top of the base plate. So that's not the base plate surface there. And then tiles and ingots just in the plain light gray color. Off to this side, this is the year of the ox. So they've got an ox build here, which uses some additional prints that are unique to this set. You can adjust the, the angle of the head so this can be turned around. That's a really, really good shape, especially for the mouth there. I like how that technique was pulled off and off to the side, you can see another printed, that's a one by two brick right there. And this has a light brick built into it and it's very bright. So that lights up quite significantly and looks great. Uh, that is a, a very nice feature, a good use of a power feature, I think. And again, just really well 
integrated and, and just adds a lot of extra spark and life to this. I like the bridge. It's kind of small. Its construction is maybe simpler than it even appears. There's not a whole lot of studs on the side construction with it or anything. I uh, don't particularly like those two little bits of, of gray that show through there, but I don't know if that was intended to be there or if it's just what happened from how it had to be put together in this small space, but I like it. You know, it, it, it's very charming and fits into the space very well. The bridge goes over some water and that water is formed with shaped shores and some depth using the same types of techniques that were used on the Ninjago City set. So you have uh, just trans light blue colored tiles and some plates over different colors underneath. They're shaping with the, the plates around the shore itself to show you where the dirt would be. And then there's also coloration underneath and they have some plants that are on top, some that are on the sides and some that are just beneath the water. On the other side of the bridge, things become more unique. Now, I personally don't know if these are intended to be water lilies or uh, lotus flower, or if they're supposed to be simulated lotus flowers with an actual lamp in the middle or lantern in the middle, because the orange Baraki eye piece looks like it may be a, a man-made element, but whatever it is, it looks cool and definitely fits, I think, with the overall motif. And those are printed one by two trans light blue tiles with two different koi designs. So they've got the, the, the yellow based ones with a little bit of orange and they got the white and orange ones. Uh, there's only one of each uh, in terms of design, but you turn them around, you, you switch their orientation and it kind of looks like they're swimming around. So that's actually a really nice thing and could definitely be useful in a lot of custom builds in the future. Behind that is a stand of bamboo and that uses regular green, lime green and bright green. They've brought in the bright green color also for the candlestick pieces originally introduced with some Harry Potter sets. And in bright green, they do make for a fairly good bamboo, I'm not gonna say trunks, but you know, stalks. I'm not completely convinced about how it branches off towards the top, but the overall appearance of this, if you, if you stand back and just you know, appreciate it from any reasonable distance, it immediately says, oh yeah, that's bamboo. So therefore, I have to say it's successful, even if, I don't know if it's the most uh, ideal way of, of building things when you really look at the details up close. Here's another string of lanterns, and again, they're using the same elements that we've seen up to this point, just a bunch of them put together in different ways, and you also have some printed wishes at the ends. Getting back to the footpath and continuing on past the bridge, the walkway continues and you get to a couple more rows of the lanterns made with the red transparent minifig headpieces. Half of them are printed, half of them are not. And this is also where the other entrance is. So when you go through there, you end up right here. This is just a small stone uh, bench just for somebody to sit down and rest. And at the end of that pathway over here is by far the most complex thing in the entire build. It's this little pavilion area, which has a fairly simple plinth-like table in the center of it, but it's all about the roof. This took quite a bit of doing, quite a bit of assembly, and is a pretty complex thing that even took multiple designers to come up with, uh, as we, we frequently don't see just how much cooperation there is between designers at Lego when they're, they're working on projects. They actually let us know about this little, little behind the scenes tidbit, which was nice to hear of just how multiple designers can work together to, to figure out something that's complex. You would think that something of this shape would be easily doable, but it's not just the shape, it's also the size, the scale, making it work for minifigs, you know, not being too oversized and also being able to close up the edges not have big gaps. The only gaps that this really had are covered up with these very simple little additions, which again, use recolored candlestick pieces here in dark blue. And they also have the dark blue colored bananas that they, they used for that. You got some, some uh, car spoilers or wings here, the small ones, the newest of two by three versions of, of wedge plates there, the ones that were introduced on the Sith TIE Fighter that come to a complete point. I believe this is a new color for this piece as well. And I think 
And maybe a new color for this as well. The uh, This is a Technic ball end at the absolute end of it. You got some teal around here. You got the dark red color for the large or tall fence pieces, old style fence piece attached upside down. Those are clipped in. I mean, there's just so much going on with this. These are used as hydraulic rams or as uh, uh, just smokestacks frequently in Lego City stuff. You got some Technic pieces in between there. There's a lot that went into this. There's a fair amount that went into the base as well. But by far, this is this is the masterwork of the entire set as far as design technique is concerned. Let me show you the separation of the 32 by 32 and 16 by 32 segments of this, just how easy it is. These just pull apart. There we go. Absolutely perfect. They just pull apart like that. And I was lucky here. I got the pins to stay where I wanted them to. And in it goes. There we go. So that gives you a different arrangement, puts the pavilion on the other side, really makes it feel almost like you've got a mirrored build here, even though it actually isn't. But as far as the, the shape of it goes, this is your corner. So if you had, if you wanted to put it on this end of a street with more buildings, more build out to your, you know, to your right, then this is how you do it. It's so simple. And it still is an effective uh, layout. It just does not connect to the path now. So this path kind of dead ends back here. You want to build that out into something else. I'll show you how that looks around this side. You know, it just it just ends here. So where does that go? You do need to kind of fill that in if you want. I mean, I guess it could end at just a, a wall with some vines on it or something. But the other part, though it is not connected with the pathway and does have its own little section, off to the side. I think this is so short, it doesn't really feel like it's trying to be a full pathway. It's just a little bit of extra paved, you know, old school paved off area. And it's mostly just the entrance to the pavilion of this entire, this entire plaza area here. So this is the, the walk over the water or the bridge entrance, and this is the pavilion entrance and it works. It's also critically important that I point at the yellow frog under the bridge. So Looking at minifigures and minifigure-like things, this one is basically intended to represent a, a mannequin or something like that uh, with a lantern for a head. So in-universe, this would have a bright, lit-up head. It's unfortunate that we do see the, the black mark on the minifig neck through that head. Otherwise, it would be much brighter looking. For example, when you look around the back, you know, that's just a much better appearance. It's, it kind of looks like a, like a pomegranate uh, seed there, but this is a nice you know, unique print for this year. Speaking of unique prints for this year, here's the official merch, the official 2021 year of the Ox hoodie. And it's a gender neutral torso, thank goodness. So it's used on both of these characters here and you can swap them onto whoever you want. The guy on the left has a bubble milk tea. Uh, I don't see any tapioca in it, but I, th I think the overall design there is pretty good. Got a selfie stick there on the right. And there's another new print for 2021 that I will show you after I show you the backs of these figures. No alternate face there. No alternate face there either. But that's a new print for the phone. So I'm glad to see more variety for phones. And there's another one there now on the right with that one by two orange print. And I say, bring it on, please. Lego more and more and more different options for mobile phones. For the longest time, we had like one. We should have a lot of variety and this has just increased that dramatically. Now, speaking of variety, look at these torso prints. Yeah, the one on the right is a little bit simple, but it's not a particularly common color for just a regular figure torso. On the left, there's a lot of detail in that print. And this guy has arm print. That is shocking for something that's not a licensed set to get some nice arm printing. That is good. I appreciate it very much. One thing that I don't appreciate very much here is that the face of the guy on the left is not printed all that well. Maybe you don't see it. It depends on what device you're looking at, but full screen, big screen, it's uh, just not as opaque as it should be. It's a little bit, a little bit weak there. It's not intended to be like that. It's just the production work wasn't that great, but it's not terrible. He also has an alternate face, so that's good. Here are a couple kids, and yes, these are full-on kids with the shortest legs that do not bend. A lot of people want those legs to go away entirely and to be replaced by mid-sized legs, but mid-sized legs are noticeably taller than these. And this is just the official way to get smaller children that aren't babies. 
The print on the left will certainly be loved by MLP lovers the world over. And on the right is a comic Monkey King uh, print, which is really cool to see. And yes, I am aware that the Monkey Kid theme exists. That is the Monkey King right there in, in comic form. I like both of these torso prints. I also really like the colors for the legs because you got sh uh, short teal on the left and short dark green on the right. Uncommon colors in general and uh, especially just special for the short version. This is the uh, thumbnail clickbait uh, face on the left. That one's printed pretty well. Alternate face for the kid on the right. And this is a perfect opportunity to show you the printed trans red minifig headpiece. Um, there, I'm going to blow out the, the brightness a little bit so you can see the print itself. It's not uh, consistent from one to the next. The gold, like it's a little bit patchy there, but you can see it's just an ox and it has the a little bit of decoration on the back of it as well. And it is based on a Lego design. You see it has a stud on the back of it. So that's pretty cool. And again, it is printed on both sides. And here's the last minifigure. He is stuffing his face with the food in that bowl. That is a printed one by one round tile that's just sitting in there. So if I turn this around and shake it a little bit, it'll actually fall out of the bowl. That is, uh, forgive me if I pronounce this incorrectly, but as I understand, it's Dang Yuan. Uh, I've eaten that before. It's a, a sticky rice ball dumpling thing. It's served in different ways, but the black in the middle is the traditional uh, really, really, really sweet black sesame paste. I'm not a big fan of it myself. I've always been more a fan of the deep fried sesame balls uh, with the uh, red bean paste in, in the middle. So a cool print for the torso and a, an appropriate print for somebody stuffing his face there <laughs> for the face. And he does have the, uh, sorry, I'm just get that. As you can see, it just falls right out. So there's, there's no stud, but uh, he's got the spoon as well and a good print on the back with a little bit of metallic in there for the zippers. And he does have an alternate face to show his satisfaction after he is done or before he has begun eating. And here's one additional minifig accessory build. It's a little toy rabbit that, as I understand, would also have a light inside of it. And I think it's supposed to just have uh, just wheels on the base of it. And then you pull it along with a string. Unfortunately, there's no string here, but this is a unique and specialized print. It's a little bit, a little bit creepy with the red eyes. Like you could easily see this as a living thing that's just possessed, you know, take, take it off the roller skate and just have it, I don't know, maybe guarding a cave and defeating old medieval knights. And that brings us to the leftover pieces, of which there are some nice ones in here, some relatively special, relatively rare things, and one of the new print, the little food piece. There are no stickers used in the set whatsoever. However, there is a vinyl sheet for the banners that hang out front, so that's what's left over there. But, you know, these are just die cut, so there's nothing to do as far as Placing them properly, there's nothing to get wrong. So I paid $120 US for this, the retail price, and it has almost 1,800 pieces, giving it a crazy low price to part ratio. Crazy low. However, it does have a lot of one by ones in it. It has a lot of one by one tiles, a lot of one by one stud pieces and modified plates. A lot of one by twos as well with those, uh, the, the tiles used for the, the pond area and also all of those ingots used for the, the pathway. All these pieces used for the roofing along the edges. I mean, there's not a lot of area there, but it's a lot of individual pieces. So at the end of the day, honestly, even though I like this set a lot and have so few complaints about it, I may have to nitpick to come up with complaints about it. I don't feel like there's $120 worth of stuff here unless I really, really pay attention to all the little details. If I just stand back, you know, look at this for the first time as someone who's not really, really into this set in particular, maybe who didn't build it and hasn't appreciated all the details yet, let my eyes blur a little bit. I don't see $120 worth of stuff here, even though that price to part ratio looks so good on paper because ultimately, you know, this is flat. Most of it is ground. You have a little bit of fence going around two sides. You've got the small bridge, which is small. The ox is nice and it does have the light brick. Okay, we got to give them a little bit of credit for that. And then you have this very nice 
pavilion over here. It's still not huge. You know, it's not a major building or anything. There's some foliage, some small details, but you know, it's not like this is a, a 32 by 48 space with a building on it. It's mostly ground. That said again, the ground itself is built up. You've got a lot of depth. You've got a lot of layers in there for the pond and, and the shore of the pond as well. So I get it, right? I built this thing. It took almost four hours. I know what's here, but when I step back and think about value, price to volume of stuff ratio here is not good, right? Even though price to part ratio is amazing. That's it. I like it. I like the set. I like almost everything about it completely without caveat. I wish that it was more like $100 US personally. That would feel like a premium price, um, but a lot more reasonable to me for this amount of stuff that I'm looking at here in front of me. The prints are, are great. Recolors are really nice. The building techniques are fantastic. Did I mention the prints? <laughs> The prints are are fantastic. And you know, oh, also the ability to reconfigure it, that was great. That was that was a little bit of extra fan service there. The ability to to change the side that the corner is on. Really, really good work there. And will make this a lot more useful in its default build for a lot more people. Um Lego needs to do more things like this and not relegate them just to the seasonal sets. Uh, and in particular the the Lunar New Year sets. They need to do more parks. Parks that can fit into a town, parks that can fit into a, a city as a little bit of escape, a little bit of green space. It is so valuable. And there are so many people who want stuff like this. Because think about think about this set right here, minus the red stuff, right? Minus the lanterns. You, you take down the seasonal stuff from this scene in universe, and it's just a park. It's just a really nice park where people will go take a little walk, stand up on the bridge, you know, throw some crumbs at the at the koi pond, you know, come up in here. A couple will come up in here and just, you know, talk slowly to to each other and just enjoy the the time. You know, old people will take their their walks, their their route will go through here, you know, every single morning. Just it's it's just fundamentally good peaceful space for the minifigures and therefore us huge figs can live vicariously through those minifigs while we're building it and after once we display it or if we choose to play within this space as well. Especially now that Lego has suddenly dis just discovered through amazing research, they've discovered that adults and other folks who are not really young kids actually like Lego and adults in particular during times when maybe, I don't know, things aren't going great in the world, you know, there's a lot of bad news going on, there's a lot of stress. Uh, people like to have an escape. Lego has discovered this, which is, which is amazing. It's, it's just, you know, top-notch, uh, groundbreaking research that, that they've done. I'm being super cynical, of course, but, you know, they've discovered that niche, which is huge. Uh, they should exploit it, in my opinion. They should do more parks, green spaces, um, just nice scenes and make them minifig compatible in particular. Uh, it's, it's nice to build up stuff that is realistic scale, like the, the, the bonsai tree uh, was, and you know, some of the flowers and stuff like that. But I think most of the charm of Lego is in the minifig scaled stuff and the minifig compatible stuff, stuff that comes with minifigures, because then people can have an even more direct personal connection with the space and with, with the builds. So more of this Lego, please. Uh, keep the prices as low as you reasonably can. I know you gotta make money. I know that em Lego employees have families. They need to you know buy food for their children. They need to pay rent or mortgage or, or whatnot. You know, <laughs> business is not intrinsically bad just because it exists, but uh, the more people who can afford good Lego sets, the better, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm always going to push for reductions in prices and keeping them as, as low as reasonably possible. I've got a build for this. Again, it took almost four hours. Um, so it may take Lego, excuse me, it may take YouTube a little bit of extra time to get that prepared for you. But there's also the speed build, which is the time lapse, which is sped up. Still 
speeding up a four hour build a whole lot to the point where it's at least, you know, super fast, but not a blur. It's still gonna take a little, little while, but both of those are available. They're on their respective channels, linked from the end screen and also from the video description and from my main channel page. Check out one of those if you'd like to. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you again soon.